question learning with python am i audible chandra yeah yeah so in this course with machine learning with python we have discussed descriptive analytics we have done descriptive analytics in python we have introduced python then we did discussion on linear regression multiple linear regression we have done multiple regression in python using the ipl data case then we do another set of problems called the classification problem using the german credit data set and we use logistic regression for the classification okay that's where what we have done we have used regression multiple linear regression using the ipl data set that is one set of problem for machine, machine learning supervised machine learning and we have done german credit data set logistic regression on that particular data set and that was a classification problem so both the regression and the classification problem we discussed were cases of supervised learning in one of the lecture i gave you a brief overview of, of something called clustering so i will just reiterate it, it in short so that you can have a idea and we'll see how to implement it in python so clustering we know is one of the most frequently used analytics application and it helps the data scientist to create some homogeneous groups it may be homogeneous group of customers it may be homogeneous group of entities for better management in many analytics project once the data is come is uh, data preparation is completed clustering is usually carried out before applying other analytical model what does clustering do it is a divide and conquer strategy okay which divides the data set into homogeneous groups which can be further used to prescribe the right strategy for different groups okay so in clustering we basically divide the data set into homogeneous groups and the objective of clustering is to ensure that the variation within a cluster is minimized while the variation between the cluster is maximized so this is very important objective of clustering is what within group variation or within cluster variation is minimized and variation between the different clusters is maximized we did the k means algorithm for clustering we discussed in the last class the k means algorithm for clustering how it works now see we have to remember clustering is a unsupervised learning it's a unsupervised learning okay so classes are not known a priori in classification what we did those are supervised learning where classes are known a priori in the training data another difference between clustering and classification is that clustering is descriptive analytics while classification is a predictive analytics okay now let us take a example if a one company wants to increase its brand awareness to appeal to one its existing or possible future customers it must design a campaign okay the company can design a single campaign to address all its customer but if we can cluster the customers if we can divide the customers according to income according to ages according to their preferences okay according to their profession according to the gender in that case the same campaign may a single campaign may not make appeal to different clusters we are doing the clustering based on basis of income age preference profession or gender so once we have 
divide the mass into or population into a number of clusters based on these variables we can design several campaigns for several groups right this is the understanding of clustering now how does clustering works that is a question clustering uses different distance of similarity or dissimilarity measures to derive different clusters so it, it uses different similarity or dissimilarity okay measures to derive different clusters now this similarity measures plays a very important role in clustering okay so the first data set that we will be using for clustering is called is a small data set of customers with their ages and income information okay the data set is called income data called the income data okay so before doing clustering we need to call all our libraries import pandas as pd then import apply as np then we import matplotlib dot p y plot as plt import c1 as sn these are the packages we import then we will use the we will from the data frame customers customers underscore df equal to pd dot read csv we will read the file and what is the file name let me check the file name exact file name it's income data dot csv Okay, so let me see what are, what does the data contains. Customers underscore df dot head. It contains the income and the age. Okay. Uh, let me form an initial cluster. How we write it? Sn dot lm plot. We want to do it based on age. Then income. Okay. Then you want to take the data from the frame. Customers underscore df. It rate equals false. Size equals four. Let me run it. Customer was spelling is wrong. Sorry. I have run this C1 package. It 
is not feel it is fit fit rich okay the clusters look something like this so we have used sm sm dot sm plot we have used on age and income data we have taken from customer df fit rate is false size is 4 let me see if we change the size to 8 what does it happen it's a big representation okay you can change the size let me keep it to 4 for the time being now if we see this plot on the top left side of the graph, depicting low age, high income. On the top right of the graph, depicting high age, medium income. And on the low, low income, and age has a spread from high to low. Right? So, I told you that we will be using different similarity matrices. The similarity matrices can be Euclidean distance, right? It can be Euclidean distance, it can be means cause t distance, right? There can be different measures of that. Now, let me do a K-means clustering on this and see how does this looks. Okay, let me apply K-means clustering. For K-means clustering, you have to take escalon dot cluster import K-means from escalon dot clusters import kevins what happened M will be capital, sorry, this K means M will be capital, right? Okay. Then cluster size will be 3. Let us take cluster size equals this M will be capital. K means, please remember, don't make a typo. And cluster dot feet it will be from customers df okay this customers level okay customers level this is a very this is a output variable that contains level that identifies the cluster to which an observation belongs. Okay, so now if we write customers, cluster it. to customers dot levels underscore sorry it will be clusters level sorry you want to level the clusters right then you see 
कस्टमर्स की है हम से जीरो टू फाइव So the first point belongs to the zero cluster. The second point belongs to the third cluster. The second point belongs to the zero cluster again. Okay. So some kind of clustering has been done. Okay, using the k-means. Maximum iteration was three hundred. Okay. So clustering is done. Now I want to represent the clustering. Now what is the challenge? I want to represent the clustering in a visual format. Okay. So for that, let us define the markers. Markers means the various symbols that will be used for the various groups. So let us define three markers. Uh, let one marker. Let us use plus. Another marker. Let us use this power sign. Another marker. Let us use dots. Okay. These are the three markers. I will then S N dot and then plot. to cluster all h and income okay data we will take from data frame customers underscore df you will be clustering It which was false markers, false markers, right equals four. Yes, cluster it. I think. I have named it wrong. Cluster read. Yeah, it's a spelling mistake. In this file, see cluster read. Once I run this. These are the three clusters formed. Okay, this is a standard K-means cluster. Three segments, customer segments created by cluster. Now, this class, this above clusters have almost segmented based on income. Okay, this is. possible because the salary is on the larger scale compared to the age the scale of the age is between 0 to 60 okay the scale of the age is between 0 to 60 the scale of age is between 0 to 60 and that of salary is between 0 to Fifty thousand. Okay. Now, just consider a case. Difference in age between two customers with age twenty and seventy is significant, but numerical difference is only fifty. Similarly, suppose one customer has age twenty, another customer has age seventy. Okay. Difference in age between two customers is fifty numerically. And difference suppose in salary between them is ten 
transform h equal to class cluster of age and income Now let me see the scaled customers. How does it look? Okay, this is how the area of the. scale feature looks like so we have scaled the features now again do a let us do a kmins with this scaled features again we have to do from sklearn dot cluster import kmins now we are doing on the scaled features the kmins where we are we will use the same code clusters underscore new dot feed it will take from this data frame scaled df scaled underscore customer df Cluster new. Let us name it cluster new equals k means for 
let us take the k value to be 3 and any random state 40 then we do the cluster new fitting fit on this data set so we define cluster new with k means 3 and random state 42 and we apply cluster new on this particular data set clusters sorry clustering is done then again we use levels customers underscore df same line it is same as the previous Plus period, the letters minus class period, let's go new equals class letters new. For drawing the cluster, I will use the same code, so I'm just Copying it from here, I will use the same markers. And this line I can also copy from here. I have to just change the data frame name and the hue name. Cluster it underscore new. Press for the same. Okay. This is how clustering is done in Python. Now, if you want to interpret the cluster, we are really required to find the cluster centers and interpret the cluster. Each of the cluster is defined by the cluster center, remember? And the cluster center explains the characteristics of the cluster and helps us to interpret the cluster. For example, if the in this customer segment problem, the cluster center provides the average age and the average income for each cluster. Okay, and the customer's age and customer income will vary from cluster to cluster. So how to represent this cluster center? We want to represent the cluster center. We'll use group by. We have to group by cluster it. H then take the income. Age then take the income. Then we take the aggregate. Take the mean, you take the standard deviation, and you take the reset index generating data frame form.
Yeah, so in this you can speak whatever you want. Customer Santa's code DF. Okay, let me define the cluster centers before that. Cluster sort cluster underscore okay. There is a type. Let me see what is the uh, cluster in. Have named is as cluster in here. Shomendas, let me unmute you. Let me mute you. Oh. Then comes age income. Okay, I have missed after standard limit. I have missed this semicolon. That was the problem. Come within single Yeah, Shoman, you want to ask something? I am unmuting you. Just tell me. I have unmuted. You can tell me. But you are raising your hand constantly, so I am unmuting you. Sir, mean should be inverted comma? Ha, mean mean should be inverted comma. All right, right. I am missing it. Sorry. I was just searching it. Thank you. Thank you, Shoman. Was this Obhishek or Shoman? Yeah, thank you. I was just making some. Yeah. So this is uh, the cluster centers and interpreted interpretation of clusters. Now, for each of the cluster, you have defined the mean and the right. That gives you the average mean and average income. And see this for the customer age and customer income vary from cluster centers. Okay. And you also get a flavor of the cluster, cluster variance. Yeah, are you convinced? For the different clusters, that means the different customers' age and customers' income, no. the mean is varying at the same time. Okay, you are getting the flavor of the cluster variance in this case. I am I am muting you once more. You want to say something more? So, cluster zero, if you see, it's just having a mean age of, okay, cluster zero, in this case, is having a mean age of 46, 
cluster 1 is having a mean age of 39 and cluster 2 is having a mean age of 31 okay and what is the mean of the average income for clusters 2 the mean age is 31 and income is 54 see income mean is 54 so it's low age and high income group for cluster 1 mean age is 39 and income is 18,000 so it's mid age and low income and for cluster 0 mean age is 46 and mean income is 43 okay you have again raised a and yeah Shomendash you want to say something once more I have you can speak if you want I'll ask to unmute you okay so that is the basic of clustering okay so if outline of what we have discussed in the entire course I'll mention once before I end up today this is the last class I'll not drag it till 5 we have given an introduction to artificial intelligence sorry oh, sorry We have given an introduction to artificial intelligence. Then we have done descriptive analytics in Python. Then we have defined Provide learning within which we have done degradation problem, right? We have discussed degradation analysis and Logistic, sorry. Integration. We have done implementation using two data sets in Python. We have discussed unsupervised learning, mastering, implementation in Python. Okay. This is what we have done for the entire course over the last. 10 hours 45 minutes. We have 15 minutes left for it. I have intentionally kept 15 minutes for solving doubts related to what you have or if you want to ask any question from me because today is my last session. So if you have any question to ask me, I can answer that question.
Yeah, so when you can speak if you want. You have raised your hand for a long time. Other people, the person whom I can uh, see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, show me you want to speak something. Unmute. Can I tell I can I tell sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a very simple thing in regression, a linear regression process. So, what? How? Just uh, one small doubt that it non-explained and explanatory and uh, non-explained and explanatory variable. What is the, and response variable? What is that difference basically? Okay. You want to know what is meant by? Can you just non explanatory and explanatory and response variable and how it is distinguished in a... in regression problem, right? Yeah, yeah. In regression problem, what we have, we have the independent variables, right? In regression problem, yeah. we deal with two kind of uh, variables, okay? One is called the independent variable. Another is called the dependent variable, right? So the dependent variable Y is sometimes called the outcome variable, okay? okay. The dependent variable Y is sometimes called the outcome variable. Now, it is also, now we have explanatory variable, okay? And we have the response variable. So which which variable you, you can, can you answer which variable explains the model? You want to know what is explanatory variable and what is response variable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just tell me, just a simple question. I tell you that Y is the outcome variable and X is the independent variable. Okay. And what does R square, what does R square implies in a regression model? I, 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 will, I will try to make in such a manner you remember it for life. What does R square imply in a regression model? What does what information I R square give you? Uh, that is the relational uh, very uh, relation most relation with the variables. No, R square gives you an idea that how much percentage of the variation in the Y can be explained by the X. Okay. okay. Now, which one will be your explanatory and which one will be your response? You tell me. You take two minutes time. Let others speak. I think you can answer. The dependent variable is called the response variable. Okay. No, no, and, no, now it's okay. Now it's okay. Confusion and, clears. And, and the independent variable is called the explanatory variable because the independent yeah, yeah. variable explains. Okay. It, independent variables, independent variables help you to explain the Y, the variation in Y. Okay. So why yeah, is yeah. my, why is, why is my outcome or dependent variable? Okay, why is called why is called the outcome variable or why is called the response variable or why Resp is called the dependent variable? variable. Okay, why okay. is my response variable? And X is my explanatory variable. Is That's the function why I, of uh, mm -hmm. okay. That is that is the an R square gives you an idea of how much variation the model can explain with the series of X that you have. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, are you are you a, uh, are you a uh, student or a prof? Hello. Are you a fourth year student? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I am doing the PhD here. Okay, okay, in JS University. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Then, who wants to sell something?
अमित मित्र विपुल चक्रवर्ती देन व्हाट द पीपल हियर दैट इज सी नेम्स देवश्री मित्र कांचन अधिकारी कुणाल दास लोकमुद्रा साहब प्रणति रक्षी राकेश पति रोशन कुंदू शौकिया चौधरी इफ यू डोंट हैव टू से एनीथिंग वी कैन स्टॉप द प्रोसेस हियर ओके इफ यू वांट टू गिव एनी फीडबैक यू कैन राइट टू मी एट मुखर्जी डॉट रोहन सिक्स 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 एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम एंड इफ यू वांट टू इंप्लीमेंट समथिंग यू नीड टू कोड रिगार्डिंग दिस इंप्लीमेंटेशन राइट टू मी आई विल शेयर द कोड विथ यू ऑफ पाइथन ओके चंद्रनाथ आर यू देयर चंद्रनाथ आर यू देयर ओके देन लेट अस Talk for today.